Wednesday, and that means it's time to take medical matters into uh, Mansfield today. As usual, we're joined by our resident GP, Dr. Vicky Skitter. Dr. Vicky, nice to have you in the studio again with us. Nice to have you. Nice to be here. Um, uh, this particular show comes on the back of an email that we got in uh, to Mansfield today. Somebody really concerned about a family member. We're not going to go into any detail here because it is quite a sad story. A family member who is being diagnosed with cancer. So we thought we'd look at the treatment of cancer and the effects of cancer. But Vicky, let's keep it with broad strokes because we, we don't want to get too specific about it. Okay. Um, but I believe that for the purposes of this show, you have invited... Um, an oncologist into, yes. this, into the show. Um, we have Dr. Gary McMichael. Mm -hmm. He's a specialist physician and oncologist at Flora Clinic, and he was so kind to join us today. Gary, thank you for taking time out to join us. Welcome to Mansfield today. Um, thank you. Loads of questions, so so let's let's try and get through them as as quickly and and. Uh, Look, it's, it's not a nice subject to have to discuss, no. but uh, let's see where, where we can assist. So over to you, Dr. Vicky. Okay, so I think the question was specifically about chemotherapy, but I know this is a very broad, um, a very broad subject. But I think um, I did a little bit of research also on other patients and <clears throat> what kind of questions they would like to ask. And I would just imagine the first thing um, they ask I would just imagine is, doctor, will I survive or what's my chances? Isn't that a very hard question to answer? Uh, yeah, morning. Thanks for having me. Um, if I can maybe spend a few minutes having done this for a number of years. Um, these sort of questions are very difficult to answer because they're very broad and it very much depends on the circumstances um, of the patient in front of us. Just a few things about oncology, if I may. I'm not going to talk for hours, but so oncologists are specialists in cancer treatment. There's many different types of radiation oncologists using radiation beams, surgical oncologists actually removing tumors, and people like myself who are medical oncologists, and we use medications to treat cancer. Now, these medications can be in a number of forms. We use, for example, hormones. We use antibody treatment sometimes we use medications aimed at um, inhibiting growth of tumors we use uh, chemotherapy drugs where chemotherapy in the traditional sense is uh, a whole group of drugs that are used that actually directly kill the cancer cells so that's a sort of traditional type of chemotherapy which i think is mainly what we're going to be talking about today the point is that, you know, like if one goes to your doctor, your GP, and the doctor says, we're going to give you an antibiotic, it can be one of many different drugs, and chemotherapy is the same. So just because somebody is going to have chemotherapy doesn't mean that this is the end of the world. It doesn't mean they're going to have every sort of traditional side effect in the book. Um, the effects and the side effects will vary considerably depending on what we're using, which drugs. Um, how often we're using them, what doses are we using them as a single drug or combination treatment. And this will really depend on the assessment that the oncologist will make looking at the type of cancer we're treating, um, what we're trying to achieve with that. Because, you know, obviously if one is aiming for cure, because there are definitely curable cancers, um, then one would accept a little bit more in terms of side effects because the end res result then justifies that. Whereas if we're looking at really trying to buy time, um, keep somebody comfortable and so on, we have to be a lot more careful in terms of what sort of side effects we would actually accept. So that risk versus benefit is really important. Um, just a couple of things that uh, Vicky has posed already, things like, does everybody lose hair? Does everybody get sick? And the answer is definitely not. You know, that really depends on, on what treatments we're doing. Um, I think the main thing is have a very good and frank discussion with your oncologist as to what to expect from the treatment and make use of the oncology nurses. 
oncology nurses are worth their weight in gold. You know, they've been doing this for many, many years and they often can give a lot of good advice and support after the fact, um, possibly even better than what the oncologist can. So I hope that's a, a sort of good broad answer to start with. Okay, well, that's awesome. Um, it's interesting. I didn't think about the oncology nurses, mm -hmm. and I think they're very special people. We, we should remember yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so the, the, the side effects, then maybe we shouldn't go into the side effects really because it's going to be different for every single um, person. person. Um, yeah. What about people that ask you, is there certain kinds of foods or certain type of diet that I need to follow? One question that I also had, which I would probably ask as well, is can you have alcohol while you're having chemotherapy? I mean, oh, doctor, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm asking. <laughs> Yeah, you'd be amazed how often I get asked that, and my See. my answer is usually it's compulsory. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think the the point is again it depends on the type of treatment, but um, there, there's no specific foods that one needs to avoid. Um, you know, all these uh, myths that you that you'll read about where one should avoid sugar and so on. I mean, that's uh, that's just not true. Um, Practically speaking, most people on chemotherapy will, you, there probably will be some curbing of appetite, so smaller meals more regularly, it's just more tolerable for people. Try and eat a, a more healthy, balanced diet, I mean, everybody knows what that is. And, um, you know, avoid sugary, fizzy drinks, uh, you know, the junk food type thing. Um, vitamin supplements are usually fine. Um, Again, there are specific chemotherapy drugs that work by inhibiting vitamin metabolism in the tumor cells. And then you'd, the person would be told or should be told specifically, please don't take such and such a supplement. But most of the time, there's no specific dietary changes that need to be made. And, you know, the, what I normally say to people is the, the human body is quite clever. You know, if, if one looks at something or thinks about a certain food and you know you sort of think well no let me rather not do that or if you have something including a glass of wine and that really makes you sick then you know don't do it again and um, that's probably the best advice i can give well i, I can tell you something that that i i'm a, a doctor i'm a, a cancer survivor of 11 years um and yeah. i was on chemo for nine months and I found that um, I had absolute cravings. Um, I remember one evening we were going to the theater and before we were going to the theater, we were gonna go and have dinner. And I was absolutely craving protein and I had a, a huge steak. We went to the theater and I came out of the theater and I said, okay, now I need something sweet. and it wasn't just something sweet. I wanted lemon meringue pie. It was that specific. And we walked okay. around the complex we were in until I found a coffee shop that was selling lemon meringue pie. But that's what I needed right then. And it was, it was, it was almost manic. Yeah. Yeah. Body probably needed the protein. I don't know about the pie. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I think the protein <laughs> And um, the other thing is, do you, um, I'm sure it's, it's a difficult thing to predict as well, but when people want to go back to work or want to know whether they would be able to work, what do they tell their employers? That must be a hard one as well. It's always been a hard one and it's much, uh, it, it's harder or in fact, possibly easier nowadays. It, it's always been a hard one because, you know, one is concerned about, um, uh, you know, how long will the person have side effects? How long will they be, need to be off after each treatment with chemotherapy? You know, it's often cycled once a week or once every three weeks, depending on the type. Um, and uh, our biggest problem, in fact, um, especially now with COVID, is uh, people on uh, chemotherapy tend to have um, curbing of their immune response. So basically a low immune system. And, uh, you know, while there is some conflicting evidence as to how this um, actually affects one's ability to withstand COVID or severe COVID infections, our advice at the moment is, if it possible, try not to go to work at all. 
um, but that's a special circumstance. Usually we say to people, you know, sort of take it day by day, speak to your employer before you start, tell them this is what's going to be happening. You may need uh, time off, you may need to go home a little bit early on some days, uh, you know, just uh, be uh, you know, be upfront about it in the beginning. And usually there's few problems with that. Doctor, one of the main things, and we need to wrap it up on this one, one of the main things that came through in the email was this sense of the family around this particular person who is being diagnosed um, and how the family can lend support to that, that person who's going to be going through chemotherapy. What, what would your advice be there as, a, 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 as, as an oncologist to, if you could sit down the entire family, what would you be telling them to do? Well, I think the main thing is um, it, it's be supportive, emotional support, support people, you know, if they're on their own, be with them, um, help them with preparing meals as they need and so on. I think the worst thing and what we're seeing so many people doing nowadays, and I'm sure Dr. Vicky will agree with this, um, everybody goes onto Google and tries to find uh, the most way out treatments and comes up with uh, a complete uh, bamboozlement of, of inaccurate information and it actually starts confusing people better, uh, uh, even worse. So I think um, be emotionally supportive, be uh, from, you know, don't try and be a scientist and uh, reinvent the wheel for the, for the patient. Just, just be there for them. Good advice. Yeah. Wonderful advice. Dr. Gary McMichael, thank you very much for taking time out to join us on Mansfield You're today. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Gary. You. Thanks a lot. And thank you, Dr. Vicky. It's a pleasure. It's not an easy subject to discuss. Um, it's a very emotive one and uh, emotional one. No, it is. And it uh, it's, must be really, really awful to have news like that. But uh, I think it's important to know that you should be able to get some support from obviously your family, your oncologist, so mm -hmm. choose your oncologist as well, mm -hmm. and uh, oncology nurses. Yeah. That's interesting. And also, and I can say this from experience, please don't walk into a room with somebody where you've just heard the news and you break down and start bawling your eyes out and saying, I need to hear about this, this is terrible. That's the last thing that person wants to hear, okay? Just get a grip on yourself. It's them, not you. Okay, now that we've cucked all over you guys, we'll leave you <laughs> on that note and we'll catch you next week, Wednesday, once again. Thank you, Dr. Vicky. Nice to be here, Jeremy. Bye-bye. And bye-bye to you as well.